Diwali is one of India's biggest and most important festival of the year. During this festival, the Indians light lamps outside their homes to symbolize the inner light that protects them from the darkness of evil. This festival has been celebrated for ages and there are multiple stories behind its origin. But the most popular one is the return of Prince Rama to his home after 14 years of exile after beating an evil king. So, in today's episode, let me recite this great mythological tale about this great prince and tell you the story of Diwali. Zoom in! Once upon a time in ancient India, there lived a great warrior, Prince Rama, who had a pretty wife named Sita. They, along with Rama's little brother Lakshmana, were sent to exile for 14 years to fulfill their father's commitment, which the trio accepted gracefully. Days passed and they finally decided to settle down in the forest beside a beautiful stream surrounded by trees, flowers and animals. Everything was going well until one day a demoness named Shurpanka spotted them and was immediately flattered by both the handsome princes. She approached them for marriage but both of them politely refused her proposal. This refusal enraged Shurpanka and she decided to attack Sita. However, before she could succeed, Lakshmana attacked her and cut off her nose. But Shurpanka wasn't just another demon. She was the sister of a terrible and powerful demon king, Ravana, who had 10 heads and 20 arms and was feared across the earth and heaven, including the gods. She informed her brother about Sita's beauty and how he deserved to marry her. So one day, Ravana abducted Sita and took her away in his magic chariot that could fly. But Sita was very clever and left a trail of her jewelry for Rama to follow. Rama identified her glittering jewels and followed the trail until he met the mighty monkey king Hanuman and his army, who became his friend and agreed to help find Sita. Messages were sent to all the monkeys and bears around the world who set out to find Sita. And after a very long search, Hanuman found Sita imprisoned on a distant island across the giant wavy ocean, which was hard to cross. So, Rama's army of monkeys and bears decided to build a bridge and soon they were joined by many animals to help them. And when the bridge was built, they rushed across it and fought an epic battle with Ravan's powerful army. And after days of fighting, Rama cut the evil Ravan's ten heads with a magic arrow as all the people celebrated the occasion. Rama, Sita and Lakshmana began their long journey back to their kingdom while everybody lit oil lamps to guide them on their way back home and welcome them back. And ever since, people light lamps at Diwali to remember that light triumphs over dark and good triumphs over evil. Trivia time! Did you know the word Diwali or Dipavali means row of lights in an ancient language of India called Sanskrit? Also, the city of Leicester in the United Kingdom holds the largest Diwali celebrations outside of India. Hope you learned something new today. Until next time, I wish you all a very happy and safe Diwali. And it's me, Dr. Binox, 
Zooming out! Oh, you seem to be pretty relaxed today, little kitty. Don't you have an online class to attend? Oh, yes, how could I forget that? It's that time of the year again as the holiday season is back. Wait a minute. On this joyous occasion, why don't we learn a thing or two about holidays themselves? <laughs> hey friends, so in today's episode, let us look into the history of holidays and answer a celebrating question. Who invented holidays? Zoom in! Holidays they are the days set aside by custom or by law on which normal activities, especially business or work, including school, are suspended or reduced. It's an occasion to celebrate, reflect or engage with your families and communities, in most cases for religious or holy activities, from which we get our word, holiday. But you'll be surprised to know in the Middle Ages, there were no holidays in the modern sense as people continued to go to work, war or on pilgrimages. Which makes us wonder, where did the first modern day version of the holiday come from? Well, to know that, we need to travel back in time to visit ancient Rome. Yes, the credit to pioneer the idea of holidays goes to ancient Romans. When they were not busy conquering the world, they would spend their time celebrating the religious fests by honoring their deities, organizing games, resting and traveling for pleasure. But with the fall of Rome and the ascent of the Dark Ages, the holiday as we know it took a break of its own. With the rise of Viking raiders, the constant threat of battles combined with unsafe travel routes made it difficult for most Europeans to venture beyond their regions. The most distant they ever travelled was to their neighbouring village to celebrate the occasional wedding or holy day. Then as time progressed, only the rich could afford to travel safely, with groups of soldiers protecting them. Then, in the 18th century, the artists and aristocrats revived the Roman tradition of taking a grand tour of Europe. However, until the late 19th century, going away on holiday was only for the wealthy. But luckily for everyone else, with the invention of steam trains during the Industrial Revolution, common Victorians were able to travel to new locations. And with the introduction of the bank holiday in 1871, people jumped aboard these trains to spend the three-day break by the sea and so the long weekend. Shorter holiday as we know it today was born. However, even at the end of the 19th century, most people had no paid holidays except bank holidays. It was in 1939, a new law in Britain said that everyone must have one week's annual paid holiday and by the 1950s, two weeks were common and by the 1980s, most people had at least four weeks annual holiday. And since then, holidays have managed to take their current form so that we can come together and celebrate our history, tradition and achievements. Trivia time! Did you know, January 1st is a day off all over the world also, Iran has the most public holidays of any country in the world, with 27 days in 2021. Hope you learned something fun today. Until next time, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Enjoy your vacation, my dear friends.
Oh, sorry, Kitty. We can't go for a vacation this time due to Omicron. Haven't heard stories from me in a while, right? So, let me tell you the story of Halloween today. It's going to be spooky. Zoom in. Halloween was started by the cells who lived 2000 years ago in an area which is now known as Ireland. The cells celebrated their new year on the 1st of November, the day which marked the end of summer and the beginning of the dark, cold winter. They believed that the night before the new year, the ghost would come to the world of living and the boundaries between the two worlds would blur. Hence, to protect themselves, they celebrated the festival of salmon on the 31st of October, modernly known as Halloween. They would wear costumes and light bonfires to ward off ghosts. The word Halloween means hallowed evening or holy evening. Holy because the Celtic priests would often make predictions about the future for the long and dark times that lay ahead. See, that's how Halloween started. Hey, Dr. Binox, why don't you tell them about us, the famous jack-o'-lanterns? Because we are the original jack-o'-lanterns, you pumphead. Wait, let me tell them about the both of you. So, the Celtics often carved faces on turnips or potatoes to light the way to their homes for the good spirits to enter. Later, when the Irish immigrants entered America, they discovered the pumpkin to be the new face of Halloween. How dare you! I'm the famous one, but I'm the original one. Don't you dare steal my thunder! Why are you even here, I wonder? Leave me! That's not your place! Oh, no. let me get them settled! But guys, see me next time for more fun facts! This is me zooming out! Hey guys, wait, wait, chill!